Uh, hi, Andy. Thank you very much for taking part in the Business Spotlight series. I'm no, no problem. Ed. And it's straight over to you to introduce <laughs> yourself, your company, and what you do. So my name's Andy Oakes, and I'm the CEO of the Blue Stripe Group. We are a business communications company uh, with a PR arm, a content division, and a media division. Fantastic. And tell me about the kind of work you do. So we specialize in the digital media space. Um, we have clients ranging from some major international publishers, such as News UK, um, some big ad agencies, um, which I'm not allowed to name. Um, we have some, uh, a lot of advertising technology clients, clients such as uh, Teeds, um, Zander, who are the biggest ad tech company in the world. Uh, Teeds, as I say, have been with us five years now. Right across that space, so it's that space that links publishers, tech, and agency. It's a, it's a space I've been in for ooh, 20 years now. Okay, so you, you sit sort of in between some other um, PR agencies then, if that makes sense, it's not right at the end point. Where, whereabouts are you within that? We're right in the middle. I, the, the genesis of the company is a slightly strange one, is that we started out as a pure play PR agency uh, and then decided that PR in its traditional form wasn't offering enough to clients, so we added in a lot of content. Uh, we produced a lot of videos, created a lot of events. Um, we write books for some people. Uh, and then we started, decided, well, why everyone has an agency blog. Why don't we also have, uh, myself and one of my business partners both come from a, a media background. Why don't we set up a publishing arm? It's not traditional that PR agencies also own their own trade media, uh, but the model so far has proved to be a real success. It, it, it's unusual. It took quite a bit of getting used to for both us and the market, but it seems to be working. Excellent. And um, how much of the content do you produce then for that? Oh, personally, not enough. Um, I mean, I've started, I've, I've been in the media stage all my life. I would love time to write more stories. Um, I just, you know, the, being a CEO, you don't have that time. Uh, but I try and keep my hand in. I try to get at least three or four stories up a week. I try to report, uh, record a podcast once a week with Justin, my business partner. Um, you know, we try and produce as much of our own content as possible. But the the point of a lot of our of our media arm is to give a voice to other people in the industry who don't necessarily have a voice themselves. Yeah, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah, it's, it's it's interesting to come across, you know, a slightly different take on on the PR agency. So, um, yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, well, I, I know we're going to talk about it later, but it's you know, going when you the economic conditions we've had over the last few years sort of made it a necessity, and I think it's worked. Hmm. Yeah, so, so I mean, let, let's go to that, I suppose. I mean, obviously, last few years started off with COVID. What was the yep. impact of that on the business? Had we just, we'd had a media division for six months, I think, up to that point. Um, and it was within the COVID, in the COVID period, we started really to invest in that and get that going because it was another, re it was another revenue source. Uh, PR itself, stood up really well actually through the um through COVID. as i say we, we do a lot for the digital media space in general they had a relatively good pandemic it wasn't it was a space especially e-commerce did very very well and after the initial panic where everyone thought well right what are we, we're going to lay off everybody we're not we're going to sell off our offices things got back to normal relatively quickly also i think the working from home meant that actually international business became somewhat easier we didn't People didn't expect you to hop on a flight. Mm -hmm. So I remember you know, we did a, a great pitch to a uh, very big tech company in Ivram with people in San Francisco, people in Paris, people in London. And here, we're out in uh, rural Essex where I am, all on the same call. It was so much easier. So the pandemic itself allowed us, in many ways, time to think, I, I reckon, and it allowed us to develop the media side of the business that I'm not sure we would have done had we been sat in the office dealing with the next thing, going to the next problem, going to the next problem, as as you we quite often are. Sure. And and what's the situation now? Is that excuse me, is that continued in terms of not having to jump on a plane? Can you still you know, do it do it by Zoom? Uh, yeah, we still do. I mean uh, our office in London is is in central Soho. So you know clients do like to come see us. We're ideally situated to go and see people. 
we will be jumping on planes again soon. I've got no doubt. Um, the trade shows are back on. Trade shows in this market happen, are in some fantastic places like Cannes, uh, some not so fantastic places uh, in Germany. But there, it, it, you know, there's some fantastic places to go. And um, I think it's nice to retain that personal touch. Mm. Yeah, I mean, certainly to, to have that face-to-face -face contact sometimes is, is important, isn't it? And yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> if, you, if you have to go to Cannes, you know. It's a hard life. We have to go in June. Most of the business is done on yachts and in hotels over a glass <laughs> of rosé. It, it's one of those things that sounds a lot nicer. When you get there, you think, oh, I mean, this year it was so hot. It was 90 degrees most days. And it, um, you tried not to move very far or very fast, put it that way. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always nice to be in that way on holiday, but it's like when you're working outside of it. Yeah, yeah, try to square those two. It's quite interesting. <laughs> and, um, you know, like moving forward, what do you see as the challenges for the industry? Well, I think it's it's going to be interesting in the next few months when the, sort of the economic re realities of where we are start to bite. Um, the cost of living crisis kicks in. The digital media space, uh, space is always a bit down that food chain, but if brands stop stop market or cut their marketing budget, agencies stop advertising, then then it, you know the next people in line are our guys. <coughs> Excuse me. And so you know, for us, it's making sure that we're providing a great service across the board, and, and just making sure that we're as diverse as possible in our client base. Making sure that you know most PR companies have got between ten and twenty clients. You know, with the media business and the content business, we've got between 40 and 70 clients at any particular time. Hmm. So there's, and all of those can be, um, you know, you can talk to them about everything you do. So it's, you know, for our, our commercial teams, it's making sure that every opportunity is looked at. Yeah. Because there is still budget out there. And I think it's, it's always very easy at the moment to say, right, let's cut spend and let's be, you know th things are going to be tough but there is still business to be done um i, I was I watched a great conference yesterday online uh and the mood in the market is still that one of cautious optimism hmm. so i don't think we should be talking ourselves into no too I, much I, of a recession. I and i think you know my 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 take on it would be well you can cut marketing etc but how are you going to get the clients coming in because you need that you know you can't just yeah so far and you, the, the end the end point is with costs going up you actually make more money exactly so, um, the um the great example that everyone talks about it, everyone who's ever studied one bit of marketing in their life is the is the heinz example of always advertised for a recession hmm. a more modern and up-to-date version is looking at how ryanair dealt with the pandemic um versus easyjet easyjet stopped all flights didn't do it didn't let their pilots or planes fly and thus when it became time to get going again their pilots needed to requalify. Hmm. um so it took them so much longer to get going again ryanair flew through the pandemic. I know they're not everyone's cup of tea, but as soon as people were ready to travel again, they were ready to go. Passengers were ready. They didn't stop at all. So it's understanding that, yes, there's going to be a bit of, there may be a bit of a, a tough time ahead, but work through it because the good times are, will come back. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, um, marketing and advertising done well is an investment, not a cost anyway. So, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's I think it was a key point to get across to people. And um, look, you've, you've done it for a while. What what would you have been your biggest learning as a business owner? Oh, don't don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to test the established model. Um, when I when we came into the PR side, the bigger agencies in the space gave us uh, they, they were quite initially supportive, and then suddenly thought, "Hang on, these guys are winning clients." That wasn't part of the deal. Um, and we we learned to believe in ourselves at but then when we launched the other parts of the business, you know, we should have been. I, I wish we had been bolder in going out to them. I said, yes, look, this is a whole new model, rather than thinking, well, let's just see if people like it first. Mm -hmm. um, so I think, with the benefit of hindsight, we'd have been much bolder. And when we when we launched that the media side of the business, I said, yeah, this is why we're doing it. This is why we think it's a good idea. This is why we don't see it as it being a conflict. Um, and I think. I, I just think that people like a bit of um, innovation these days. They like people to disrupt an established model. Mm. And we okay. should have embraced that earlier. 
It's, it's always easy with hindsight, isn't it? But it's, oh, um, always, yeah, yeah. I've heard similar things recently as well from other, other uh, entrepreneurs, so it's, it's an interesting, <laughs> interesting thing there. And, and, and a similar question, but not exactly the same. What advice would you give to your 18-year-old self? Uh, you don't need that hair product. It won't work for you in the end. Um, <clears throat> again, I think it would be don't worry what people think about you so much. I think, and I know we all do this, do this as teenagers and you know, go through our 20s. We're, we're petrified about what people think about us and how, uh, and I stuck in too many jobs I didn't enjoy too long. So I would tell myself, 18-year-old self, there's a big wide world out there. There's lots of new things you should be trying to do. Try lots of things before you settle on a on a on a career path. Hmm. Um, you, you know, just because you you've got a job, you don't have to stay in that one for, for life. Yeah, good good advice again. So, um, what inspires you, Andy? I'm inspired by many people from different fields. Um, there are people in business that I I'm, I'm inspired by. And in many ways, inspired not to be like them. Um, I've been through some situations where we had some slightly toxic management situations. So it's more like anti-inspiration to be honest. I don't ever want my company to be run like that. I, want, I don't ever want my staff to wake up on a Sunday, think, oh, God, it's work tomorrow. Mm. Um, but excellence in fields, as sports, in, uh, in arts, you know, it all, it all translates. So if you look at how, for instance, the England cricket team are doing at the moment, They've decided to try and reinvent how cricket is played. And it's, they're going to have some utter disasters somewhere along the line. It hasn't happened yet, but they've, yeah. they've changed how the game can be played and they're doing it with a smile on their face. And I've watched that thinking, this is excellent. They've decided to abandon the fear of losing. Yeah, so they're playing to win, aren't they? And playing not to yeah, win. yeah. It's, it's refreshing. It's refreshing and it, and it does inspire me. Uh, and I'm inspired by my own team, I think. We've got a lot of young people who work with us who we're trying to do something different with their careers. We're trying to say, look, you don't have to sit in a, you know, there is a, in PR, there's quite regimented, you you become an an account exec, a senior account exec. We're trying to say people, if we don't have to do that, if you want to do more in the content side, come and do that. If you have ideas, let's come and work, come and work with us on those. So trying to, you know, we've got some great young people who come through from non-traditional backgrounds who've done, done exceptional. We've got one guy on our team who was selling mountain bikes um, mm. a year ago and it's turned out to be one of the best people we've ever employed. But it's just, so it's just taking the enthusiasm and transferable skills and turning them into what we need. Great. Um, so look, as, a, as a final question, um, is there any news or any offer you'd like to share with the audience? Well, we're, uh, from, our side, yeah, we've, we're just doing more and better next year. Um, we run a series of lunches that we've done traditionally just in London. We're expanding those into Manchester. We do a Dragon's Den style uh, event called the Innovations, oh, sorry, the Soho Sessions. We're again taking that to Manchester and it's becoming the uh, Salford Sessions. It had to be somewhere that had an S, it didn't work otherwise. Um, we're investing a lot in video this year. Uh, that's not something we've done a great deal of in the past. Uh, but as ever, as any of our clients say, come and talk to us about what you need to achieve. And I think good businesses these days don't necessarily try and sell you a thing. They'll find out what you've what your needs are and try and fulfill those. And that's, as ever, what we'll be trying to achieve with people. Hmm. Brilliant. Well, nice way to, to round it off and look forward to, to seeing the different bits of video and things coming out this year. Great. Thanks, Ed. Thanks very much for taking part, Andy.